Welcome to the GSG and Ultimate Music Theory Level 3 Supplemental Workbook Presentation. Today may be a bit of a different kind of presentation as I'm not only going to ask, um, answer your questions, but I'm going to ask you uh, a few questions to think about and reflect on in your own life. Uh, by now, you've probably heard my story about how I hated learning music theory, and in fact, I had to learn music theory three times, and eventually, out of sheer frustration, I began writing my own worksheets, uh, which eventually grew into creating a national music theory program. As we work through this Level 3 Supplemental Workbook, I want you to think about how you learned music theory and how you teach it. And more importantly, why you teach it. In fact, grab your notebook and a pen and write this down. Think about one thing you remember about learning uh, your learning experience as a, as a music student, as a music theory student. Just write down one thing. The book you use to handwrite your answers in. The teacher that forced you <laughs> to do your homework. Write down your learning experience as a student. Just jot down a couple of notes. Now, do you want your students to have the same experience as you or a different experience? Obviously, I wanted my students to have a completely different experience. In today's busy world, things are changing rapidly. And today, we're going to talk about how to teach theory and how not to teach theory. I'm Glory St. Germain, and I'm very proud to present the Ultimate Music Theory program, along with Sheila mckibben Uren. If you've been thinking about how to teach music theory as a magical game changer that would lift your teaching business from ordinary to stratospheric, uh, the Ultimate Music Theory program, including the Ultimate Music Theory certification course for teachers, will transform your thinking and provide proven action steps that you can implement immediately. Now, teaching music theory should be a happy connection in teaching voice, piano, violin, or any instrument. The UMT program uh, and the uh, includes the Ultimate Music Theory Workbook series, uh, the Ultimate Music Theory Exam series, and the new Ultimate Music Theory Supplemental Workbook series that correlates to the 2016 Royal Conservatory of Music Theory syllabus. Plus, we are the only program with identical matching answer books, and we've created these especially for you. If you have reviewed teaching chords, melody writing, and history, you may be asking, why? <laughs> and wait, what? Well, at Ultimate Music Theory, we take complicated concepts and make it easy and make it fun. So now you can jump up and down and shout, woo, I can do this, watch, and feel confident cheering, yay me. In order to teach effectively, we ourselves must first learn effectively. So turn off all distractions like your phone, close your email, or anything else that is a distraction and be fully present here now with our time together. So take good notes. Get ready to learn with me and share in our musical adventure. Be sure to jot down your questions in the chat box, and of course, I'll be happy to answer them for you. So here's a quick overview on how the UMT uh, workbooks plus the UMT supplemental workbooks equal the Royal Conservatory of Music, the RCM theory levels. Prep 1 is used with the prep level followed by level 1. Prep 2 is used with the level 2, followed by level 3. Basic is used with level 4, followed by level 5. Now, RCM theory exams begin with level 5 through to level 8. Intermediate is used with level 6, followed by level 7. And finally, the advanced is used with level 8. The all-in-one complete rudiments workbook plus the complete level supplemental workbook prepares students for the RCM level eight theory exam. 
Now, in the supplemental series, you will read the story of UMT and how Sheila and I share our passion of enriching lives through music education. You will also meet Ultimate Music Theory certified teachers that have joined the UMT team as collaborators. Ruth Douglas, our uh, Harmony History and Analysis Consultant, Julianne Workington, our Ultimate Piano Series Composer, and Joanne Barker, our Ultimate Music Theory Games Creator. In the last session, we covered the Prep 2 Rudiments Workbook. That's the purple book, plus the Level 2 Supplemental Workbook. Now, these are meant to be completed together at the same time, followed by the Level 3 Supplemental Workbook. At UMT, we got you covered. Today, you will learn about Level 3 and what's new. Plus, you will learn the three C's for teaching the Ultimate Music Theory Level 3 Supplemental Workbook and discover how to easily teach functional and root quality chord symbols and why we need them, melody writing, motive and phrases, and what's a stable and unstable scale degree, and... Bach and the boys, <laughs> plus Baroque uh, era dances, the harpsichord, and the elements of Baroque music. And finally, a UMT success story from our special guest, Karen Worrell. The Level 3 Table of Contents itemizes the new concepts. Remember that the Level 3 Supplemental Workbook is to be completed in order after successful completion of the Prep 2 Rudiments Workbook and the Level 2 Supplemental Workbook. Now, Level 3 includes a comparison chart, uh, dotted notes and rests, rhythm review, scale degrees, intervals, and triads. And today we'll learn about chord symbols, melody writing, and music history in the Baroque era. Plus, we've included a bonus, Level 3 Theory Exam, and a special certificate um, upon completion of the Level 3, and that's included in your workbook. The Level 3 Comparison Chart. Now, this is found at the beginning of the Supplemental Workbook, and this maps out the RCM Theory concept with the Level 3 Supplemental Workbook. Now, supplemental workbook pages are indicated with a star as new concepts introduced in the 2016 theory syllabus. Now, these concepts are reviewed in the analysis pages. And the Ultimate Music Theory Flashcards app includes the beginner to prep subject divided into 12 decks that correlates uh, to uh, each of the 12 lessons in the matching workbook. So you can simply go to uh, ultimatemusictheoryapp.com and get all the details. Now let's learn the three C's for teaching level three. The first C is captivating chords. The adjective captivating describes something that is completely enthralling and just holds your attention to take or to capture. So what do I mean captivating chords? I mean we need to capture the interest of our students by introducing them to captivating chords. Now before we talk about how to teach functional chord symbols and root quality chord symbols, let's talk about how not to teach chords. When you open a recipe book and read the ingredients of a new dish you want to cook or a new dessert you want to bake for a special occasion, the recipe is not the exciting part. The exciting part is tasting the final yummy, yummy, yummy creation. But we need to be careful on how we learn how that, that recipe will help us create that mouth-watering masterpiece that all will admire and enjoy when we present it. Now, music theory is the same. 
we need to carefully learn how the recipe of music theory will help us create that musical masterpiece that will um, be admired and enjoyed when we present it. So let's not teach chords just by reading the recipe of chords alone. That, of course, is boring. So let's engage in captivating chords so that we can taste it along the way. Now, this is my UMT club class. And from left to right is Ayanna, Jillian, and Sharis. And if you have been um, uh, with us on the other uh, presentations that we've done for preparatory uh, level one and level two, then you've already uh, met Ayanna, Jillian, and Sharis. And it is such a joy for me to share their musical journey as they grow uh, throughout the series with us. Now, I want you to watch Sharis as she listens carefully to the captivating chords played by my daughter, Sherry. Sharis uses her imagination to improvise freely with her right hand. Now, remember, there's no wrong notes. Your only limitation is your imagination. You can do this captivating chords, listen activity with your students today. Now, here's Sharis. chords begins with understanding the function of the chord and the root quality of the chord, which we will learn about shortly. Now, switch places with your students. Sharis is playing the root note of the chord with her left hand, while my daughter Sherry improvises a melodic line uh, above. Now, you can do this captivating chords play activity with your students right now. So what share us? look at the concept of chord symbols. Root quality chord symbols and functional chord symbols. Now what's the difference? Let's do the exercise one from page 32 of the level three supplemental workbook. The following triads are written in the key of D major. D major has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. Root quality chord symbols are letter names based on the root note of the chord. And that indicates the quality, major or minor of a triad. Now, an uppercase letter indicates a major triad. Question one says, A, write the root quality chord symbol above each triad. Now, the root note of the triad is D. And the quality of the triad is major. So the root quality chord symbol is an uppercase D, indicating D major triad. Check. When a triad is in root position, meaning all lines or all spaces, the lowest note is the root note. Whether this is solid, a blocked form, or ascending or descending broken form. The root quality chord symbol is written above the very first note of the triad. 
So now in the next one, we have the root note of the triad is A, and the quality of the triad is major. So the root quality chord symbol is an uppercase A, indicating A major triad. Check. Now, the functional chord symbol for a tonic triad is built on scale degree one of a major scale and is an uppercase Roman numeral number one. Looks like an I. In question one, write the functional chord symbol below each triad. So the functional chord symbol for the tonic D major triad is an uppercase Roman numeral number one, which looks like an I, indicating a major triad. Check. The functional chord symbol for a dominant triad built on the fifth degree of a major scale is an uppercase Roman numeral V, which means five. The functional chord symbol of the dominant A major triad is an uppercase Roman numeral five, which indicates a major triad. Check. Now, D major's relative minor is B minor, and they both have the same key signature, F sharp and C sharp. By now, you may have met Sola. She looks a little sad there. <laughs> oh dear. Sola says, the root quality chord symbol is written above the first note of the triad. The root note of the triad is A, and the root note is always written as an uppercase letter. The, quali the quality of the triad is minor, and a minor triad is indicated by a lowercase m. The root quality chord symbol is an uppercase A, the root note, followed by a lowercase m, identifying the quality of the triad as A minor. The dominant triad is a major triad and simply indicated by an uppercase E. Sola says, the functional chord symbol is written below the first note of the triad. The functional chord symbol is a lowercase Roman numeral, number one, looks like an I, indicating the tonic minor triad. And the uppercase Roman numeral uh, five indicates a major triad. So here's the Tito tip. Using the notes of the harmonic minor scale, the tonic triad of a minor key is a minor triad, and the dominant triad of a minor key is a major triad. So let's do the exercise number one from page 33 of level three in your supplemental workbook. And if you happen to have your supplemental workbooks handy, you may as well just use those. The following triads are written in the key of B minor. Now remember, B minor has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. So A says, write the root quality chord symbol above each triad. Now the root note of the triad is B. The quality of the triad is minor. So the root quality chord symbol is an uppercase B followed by a lowercase m indicating B minor triad. Check. Next, the root note of the triad is F sharp. The quality of the triad is major. Remember, because it has the raised seventh note of the minor key. So the root quality chord symbol is an uppercase F sharp indicating F sharp major triad. Check. And finally, uh, question B says, write the functional chord symbol below each triad. So the functional chord symbol for the tonic B minor is a lowercase Roman numeral I, indicating the tonic B minor triad. Check. And the functional chord symbol for the dominant F sharp major is an uppercase Roman numeral number five, which is indicated by the letter V. Uh, and this indicates the dominant F sharp major triad. Check. 
Did you get all that? Excellent. Now, we've been talking about captivating chords. And captivating chords are easy to learn when you first teach them using the ultimate whiteboards. Now, Sheila and I created these several years ago, and it's the best teaching tool ever. Each student has their own small whiteboard, and I use the large whiteboard with the stand in my teaching. Now, here's a quick video from my Theory Club class as I'm introducing Captivating Chords. Okay, so today we're talking about functional chord symbols and root quality chord symbols. So on the whiteboard, the first thing we're going to do is we've got our circle of fifths, right, Sophia? Yes. Okay, so who is it that's related to D major? B minor. B minor. Okay, can you point to that on the circle of fifths? Uh, yeah. So D major is related to who? B minor. B minor. Okay. <laughs> so do they both have the same key signature, Ayanna? Um, key signature. Yeah. Okay. So what are the two key? What's in the key signature for D major? Um, F C. F what? F sharp and C sharp. Very good. Okay. So today the first thing we're gonna do is write our root quality chord symbol. So who is the first note? What is the root note for D major? D. D. Okay, so can you write that above? And Sophia, you go ahead and write it on the big board. And Ayanna, you're going to write that on your own little board. So capital, are we doing an uppercase? Yeah. Yes, because the root is just a note, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to count D, which is one, and we're going to go, are we counting up or down? Up. Up. Okay, so hold up your fingers and let's count up from D to A. What number is it? Count with me. D, D E. e. F, F, G, A. Okay, so what number is that? Five. 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 Okay, so up on top, you're going to put A, capital A, because that's our root quality chord symbol. Now we're going to do our functional chord symbol, and a functional chord symbol is always called a what? Roman numeral. Roman numeral. Excellent, Roman numeral. So what is the Roman numeral for the very first note when we're talking about the tonic? One. The, uh, one. one. Okay, uppercase or lowercase? Uppercase. Because it is a major. major. Okay, so write it down, your uppercase functional chord symbol, Ayanna, on your yeah, whiteboard. I already have that. I have Very that. good. And now what kind of functional chord symbol will you have for the A? A five. Five. Okay, go ahead and write that down. Excellent. So, Ayanna, who is related to D major? D major? Yeah. It's B minor. B minor. Okay, so when we look, and how did you find that out? Because when we go from D major, how many half steps down is the relative minor? Three. Three. So count with me. D, D, D flat, flat, C, B. B. Okay, so now we're in the key of B minor. So go ahead and write your root quality chord symbol above the B. Is it going to be an uppercase B? And is it a major key or is it minor? Minus. So what little letter do we have to add, Sophia? M. M. The little letter M, and that tells us it's what? Minor. Minor. Minor, okay? So now let's do the next one. And so below that, we're going to write our functional chord symbol. So now this is the very first note in B minor. So are we going to use uppercase or lowercase Roman numeral? Lowercase. Okay, so go ahead and write it in. Very good, excellent. So now fingers up. Let's count from B all the way up to F sharp. Fingers up. B, B, C, D, E, F. Very good. Okay, so go ahead and write your F sharp on top. Your root quality chord symbol goes on top. F sharp. Okay, and are you going to use an uppercase or lowercase on there, Sophia? Uppercase. uppercase. Very good. So put in your uppercase V, and that's what number? Five. Five. Okay, so the root quality chord symbol goes above the staff and the functional chord symbol goes below the staff, right? Why do you have an A sharp in there? Where? Uh, in your five chord, because it's the what note? Because it's just the raised seventh note and the <coughs> harmonic scale. It's very good, raised seventh note. Excellent, thanks girls. When teaching functional chord symbols, and root quality chord symbols, you may wonder, well, why do we need them? Do we ever really even use them? Well, just for fun, I thought I'd share what my husband, Ray, 
gives the band when he walks on stage to perform. He uses root quality chord symbols written out in a chord chart. Uh, and here is it, it is for the song he wrote called the Métis. If you write it down quickly, you can even play along. It's only four chords, including D minor, C major, A major, and F major. So just as a treat, I thought I'd uh, let you sit in on a little performance. So here is my husband, Ray St. Germain, performing his song called The Métis. Our final performance of the evening comes from one of the hardest working men in music. He hit the stage young and he's been hitting the road ever since, touring around the world, never slowing down, never looking back. He made it from humble beginnings to the Canadian Country Music Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the legendary Ray St. Germain. Isn't that a great song? It's one of my favorites too. The second C for teaching level three is creative compositions. Creative means relating to or involving the imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work. It means doing something different. Being creative is thinking, identifying, exploring, understanding, experimenting, discovering, and establishing a new concept. Being creative means the ability to express yourself in a new, unique way. To begin our creative compositions, we need to start with a foundation. Let's begin with melody writing, ending on stable scale degrees. A melody ending on the tonic note, stable uh, degree one, or ending on the mediant note, stable degree three, sounds finished and complete, like a, like a musical period at the end of a musical sentence. Uh, the notes from the tonic and dominant triads provide the foundation for the melody. So non-triad notes can be used as, as you know, passing notes, notes that move by step uh, to connect the notes of the triad. Now on page 40, question number one, compose three melodies below. Use the given rhythm. Now start by clapping the rhythm first, you know, count out loud, tap your toes, be creative. Read the question out loud and then go back and complete each step one step at a time. So A, name the major key, name the notes of the tonic and the dominant triads. Okay, that looks easy. B, use notes moving by step, skip, or leap using notes within the tonic or dominant triads. Doesn't mean you have to use all of them, but it's a suggestion, right? C, end on a stable degree. So label the final note as stable degree one or three. And you know, you might wanna experiment what you think sounds best with your melody. D, draw a double bar line at the end. And then of course, perform your composition for family and friends. That's what it's all about. That's why it's so much fun. So open your teacher answer book. 
Now here on page 40, and of course our answer, answer books are, are identical. So if you're on page 40 in the workbook, you're on page 40 in the answer book. So here on page 40, you will see an example of how to answer this question. Now note that in measure three, you will see the dominant triad. And I have ended this melody on the stable scale degree one. And your students might have something, you know, completely different, right? This is the creative process. This is just one possible answer. It's just a suggestion to give you an idea. You can see there's a G major triad in measure one. Uh, then we've used, um, you know, passing tones. Uh, and then in measure three, we have a dominant triad. Doesn't mean that they have to use it, but it's just a suggestion for them. When composing, be creative. Learn how to compose in different ways. Now, sometimes I have my students start uh, with composing at the piano. Play a short melody, try different things, listen to what sounds best um, before, you know, they write it down. Other times we start away from the piano. Creative compositions can be done using whiteboards. In fact, I always compose with the whiteboards before writing it in their workbooks, as it's so easy to erase and correct before doing their final copy. So here's a quick look at Ayana and Sophia in Theory Club class. They're composing on page 40 using their whiteboards first. Check it out. Okay, so today we're going to talk about composing, and we're going to compose ending on a stable scale degree. What are the stable scale degree numbers, Ayana? Um, one and three. One and three. Okay, so um, we're going to do this just on our whiteboard first. So we're just on page 40 of our um, level three workbook. The first thing I want you to do is clap the rhythm. Okay, so we're doing question number one. So can you clap the rhythm and count it out loud together? Ready? One, Two pencils down, Ayanna. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Good job. Okay, so what key are we in, Sophia? G major. G major. Okay, and what are the notes in the dominant triad, Sophia? D. F sharp and A. Excellent. What are the notes in the tonic triad, Sophia? G, B, and D. Good. Okay, so Ayana, when we're going to compose our piece, are we going to move by step or skip? Um, we can move by both. Correct. We can move by both. If we're going to move by skip, then we're probably going to use the notes that are in the dominant triad, right? Okay, so Ayana, let's see what you've created here. You've already gone ahead and done some work on yours. Mm -hmm. So did you move by step or skip? I did both. You did both. Okay, and are you using notes from the G major triad? This one? GBD? Mm -hmm. Yeah. GBD, yes. Okay. Very good. I can't wait for us to go up to the piano and hear that. I like your G major in your little circle there. And Sophia, what notes are you using? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Well, at least you're being honest. So you're looking at G major and you've got GBD. And now it looks like you're going to be stepping up or using your skipping. So go ahead and try that and then we'll hear what it sounds like. Now it's time to listen to our creative composition. We need to be encouraging and also we need to compose ourselves. If you've never composed before, now is the time. It's fun. I challenge you to compose a piece of music, any music, and, uh, and send it in. You know, I would love to hear your composition and, and uh, you know, share it in one of our upcoming blogs or share it on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. So the challenge is there. Let's see who takes the challenge. Send me your creative composition. Let's have some fun. Now, speaking of fun, I'd like you to listen to Ayana's composition. So here is Ayana. Okay, Ayana, so now let's hear your composition. You did a really good job on that. So let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like. Beautiful. Now, Ayana, did you end on a stable scale degree? 
Yeah. Yeah. Did you end on the one or on the three? Three. Excellent. Thanks, Anna. Complete the creative process by adding solar sparkles, which are dynamics, articulation, title, words, or whatever you like. Be sure to have Tito tap the rhythm with you. We really want to have that strong sense of pulse in our music. Now, here's Diana as she uh, names her newly uh, creative composition with a little help from her friends, Sola and Tito. Okay, so Diana, I love your piece. What did you call it? Sola and Tito's Bunny Back Vices. Excellent. And did you add Sola Sparkles? Yes. Of course. I love your Sola Sparkles. And did you just do some Tito taps in there? Yep. And what color is your book? It's the purple one right now. And what color is your shirt? Um, it's purple. It's, and my tights are purple. Everything is purple. That's except excellent. Except for my little socks. Oh, except for your little socks. Oh, yes. Yeah. So what color are your socks? They're kind of like a peachy, as in my cat. But a, if my cat was here, he'd be a little lighter colored. Woody. All right. Yeah. Like well, thanks for, thanks for writing your song. So what was your song called again? Sola and Tito's Bunny Back Races. <laughs> give him a high five, Ayanna. Okay, if I give him a high five, don't I have to give her a high I five? I think you should give them both a high five. Oh. Hey. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ayanna. Boop. The third C for teaching level three is compelling composers. Compelling composers write music that is captivating spellbinding, mesmerizing, irresistible, powerful, emotional, storytelling, strong, reflective, overwhelmingly magical. Compelling composers create music that evokes interest, attention, or admiration in a powerfully irresistible way. I love that word, compelling. Compelling composers write music that truly can move you to tears, or it can make you laugh. Uh, it can make you feel something inside without words, just through sound. It's amazing. The music is so compelling, it can change your mood, your thoughts, even stimulate your imagination. When we teach melody writing, we are creating the future compelling composers. In level three music history, you will learn about J.S. Bach, one of the most famous composers of the Baroque period. Imagine, Bach had 20 children. 20! I have five, and I thought that was a lot. <laughs> I can't imagine having 20. You will learn about Bach's famous sons and his gift to his wife, the handwritten notebooks in which to write music, known as the Anna Magdalena Notebook. You will also learn about the Baroque era and the elements of music, including melody, rhythm, meter, tempo, dynamics, polyphonic texture, and Baroque dances. You will learn about the Baroque suite and the Baroque dances in duple, triple, and quadruple meter. Now let's have a little fun. Doesn't that look like they're, they're fun dancing? I'd like you to fill in the blanks with me here. So here's the first one, number one, A. A formal French dance in moderately fast three, four time with dainty small dance steps is called the There's a little clue for you. <laughs> it's called the minuet. A sentimental French dance in moderate, duple, or quadruple meter begins with a half measure upbeat or anacrusis, and this is called the gavotte. And third, a lively English origin dance in fast meter with a short upbeat is called the jig. How did you do? <laughs> or were you just looking up the answers? 
We are so blessed to have the resources to show our students these recreated dances in videos. At Ultimate Music Theory, we have collected all these amazing free resources for you and organized them so it's easy to follow and entertaining for you and your students as well. And yes, you are going to see all these on videos. One of the uh, instruments of the Baroque era was, of course, the harpsichord. So now you can go to gsgmusic.com and watch free resources and complete the exercises in your Level 3 Supplemental Workbook. Let's see if you can answer these three questions really quickly. I told you I'd be asking you questions today. The keyboard instrument whose quills pluck the strings is called the harpsichord. The contrasting dynamics of the harpsichord is called terraced dynamics. The symbol placed over notes to extend the sound is called a trill or an ornament. How did you do? <laughs> you will hear Baroque music played on the harpsichord that you can watch anytime. You can also share the links with your students so they can watch it at home if you don't have time to do this during class. Now, these YouTube videos have been assembled um, for you and organized, and they're going to save you hours of time for looking what, you know, might or might not work to cover all of the requirements. So simply enjoy them. You will see the page numbers and the resources all lined up for you in gsgmusic.com. In the Baroque era, you're also going to learn about uh, Petzl and his minuet in G major that is included in the Anna Magdalena notebook. Now, you will learn also about ornamentation signs to indicate melodic decoration, such as the mordant. Now, be sure to play these for your students or have them sight read uh, the music. In the Baroque era, they had an ornament or embellishment, and it was really fun. It just added to the music. In today's world, we have an app for embellishment and fun. <laughs> and speaking of apps, we've partnered with Brainscape to create the Ultimate Music Theory Flashcards app. And here's how it works. First, choose a subject um, from the library, such as the beginner prep level. Then choose one of the 12 decks that correlates to your lessons. Identify uh, the card and tap to um, uh, indicate uh, how well you knew that card. So measure your progress. Now also, uh, in addition to having all these six subjects, you have music trivia. Now music trivia also includes history, such as composers. And with over 7,000 flashcards, including audio, your students are absolutely going to love it. And you can use this on your uh, mobile phone, your computer, or your tablet. So the ultimatemusictheoryapp.com uh, can be used on any device. Now, speaking of flashcards, uh, the Prep 2 workbook includes 80 free flashcards. Now, flashcards are fun drills that dramatically increase retention, and you can use them with your Level 2 and Level 3 workbooks. So you can imagine uh, what your students will come up with, or you'll come up with, using the whiteboard with your flashcards to play, you know, different flashcard games. And Sheila's got a whole bunch of them that I know she plays that uh, that she shares with us that now and then. Uh, flashcard slap, and of course, flashcards and whiteboards, and oh, there's just a gazillion of them. They're super fun. In level three, uh, Joanne created Chord Chaos. So I uh, simply identify the root quality chords, and this is included in your level three supplemental workbook. Uh, you can even color code your functional chord symbols, you know, um, play them on the piano, write a song. Um, you can use Cheerios or chocolate chips and write the chord chaos 
uh, on your whiteboard. Uh, change them from bass clef to treble clef. I'm sure you'll come up with lots of ideas for your chord chaos game. It's just fun to play games. So let's play games. Joanne not only designs the UMT games, but she's also a teacher and she also plays them with her own theory club classes. Now the prep game, uh, music theory game pack includes six laminated games with 36 game variations. So you have a different game for every single week. You can use these with dice, dry erase markers, at the piano, or even with your whiteboard. So. Have fun playing UMT games. Now in the level three supplemental workbook, you will have analysis and sight reading. Now composer Julianne Workentine is a compelling composer. She's imaginative, creative, and she draws us into her magical world of music. In level three, Julianne's composition is called The Little Hamster and reviews the concepts learned in this lesson and also in previous lessons. So first, analysis. The analysis includes uh, key signature, um, 8VA uh, terms. Uh, we're looking at uh, Roland Tanto, uh, identifying tonic or dominant triads, uh, phrases identified as A, same, A1, similar, or B, different. You know, really go through the music, answer all of the questions as indicated on the page, and then enjoy sight reading the music. And again, do a little video, send me your video, or you could always compose another, you know, eight measures if you'd like to keep the thread going of the little hamster's adventure. Now, today we learned the three C's for teaching level three, captivating chords, listen and play chords that capture emotion, Creative composition, express yourself in a unique way. Compelling composers, create music that evokes interest, emotion. And I have one more bonus C for you as a teacher. The bonus C is the complete Ultimate Music Theory Certification course. To complete the Ultimate Music Theory Certification course, you know, thousands of music teachers have found massive success in their teaching as they use the proven step-by-step -step Ultimate Music Theory system. The Ultimate Music Theory Certification course is an online teacher training program that will elevate your professional development. UMTC examiner Sheila mckibben Uran and I invite you to join the Ultimate Music Theory family enroll today and get certified. And we are here to support your learning and walk with you every step of the way. Simply go to ultimatemusictheorycourse.com for all the details and to enroll now. Our special guest is Karen with a C. And here's what Karen Wool had to say as she completed the Ultimate Music Theory certification course. My name is Karen Worrell. I'm a teacher first and a pianist second. The Ultimate Music Theory course has opened up a whole new world for me. It's like learning a new level of the music language. I decided that theory was a weak part of my piano training. With Glory's step zone learning method, her knowledge of neurolinguistic programming, and her talent for teaching, this has made this experience efficient and meaningful. UMT has been helpful with kids and adults alike. I like to give answers to their why questions. They can really own their music learning in a way that do what I say teaching never could. The flashcards and the workbooks and the UMT app are a fun way to approach the theory, knowledge, and solidify the learning. Gloria and her team are always ready to help with clever teaching tips and mnemonics to keep your memory sharp. Gloria's positive encouragement and understanding of what it is to teach music and theory make me feel so supported. I am deepening my understanding of theory and preparing my students to do the same. I hope you will teach with passion, as Gloria says. Thank you, Karen. 
Be sure to get registered for the UMTC course and grab your UMT workbooks and supplemental workbooks, games, and of course your Solantito Stuffies pack. And remember, speed of implementation. Implement the lessons learned today. Enter your questions in the chat box and I'll be sure to answer them for you. I'm Glory St. Germain. Teach with passion.